We talked a bit about the structure of the cells of the epithelial tissue. Let's go to the next thing, which is the extracellular matrix. The extracellular matrix in the epithelial tissue is arranged in a certain fashion that makes up a membrane on which the epithelial tissue rests. So this is called the basement membrane. Basement membrane. And that basement membrane is um, divided into different layers. So, first of all, we have this, let's say, this part is the basement membrane. The closest part to the epithelial cells is called the basal lamina. So it's the layer that's at the base of the epithelial cells. And then we have reticular lamina. And this is the layer that sort of forms a kind of, of a network that connects the whole thing to the next layer or the next tissue which is the connective tissue that lies beneath the epithelial tissue. <coughs> the basal lamina can be divided into two layers as well. We have lamina densa so the dense layer, and we have lamina lucida, which is the light layer. Why are they called like this? This depends on their aspect or appearance under the electron microscope. <coughs> Just to be clear, the basement membrane cannot be seen properly underneath the light microscope unless it's one of the big um, uh, carriers or vessels for example we can see it in the trachea you can see it in the urinary bladder which is not sort of a, a vessel but if you have a thick layer of epithelial tissue then you will be able to see the base mem membrane under the light microscope otherwise you're not going to be able to see it so in the trachea in the urinary bladder you can see the basement membrane otherwise you will not be able to see it under the light microscope so this classification depends on their appearance under the electron microscope now why one of them is dense and the other one is <coughs> appears lighter under the electron microscope is because of their structure so the lamina densa mainly contains fibers lamina densa mainly contains fibers and lamina lucida contains glycoproteins so here we have glycoproteins so we have sugars and proteins those are called the main ones are called laminin laminin and entectin so those are sort of the sugars that will help to stick all the layers together. In lamina densa, we have collagen fibers. So we have collagen type 4. Collagen type 4 is called network forming collagen. It's called network forming collagen. So this is a, the collagen that makes up a network connecting the epithelial tissues with the layers beneath. And lamina lucida is sort of the adhesion sugars that will help all the layers to stick together. And then we have the reticular lamina and that one contains reticular fibers. So fibers that make up sort of a mesh 
which is less dense than the lamina densa to connect this basal lamina with the connective tissue that follows beneath. So the reticular lamina has collagen type 3 which is called reticular fibers. And we also have collagen type 7 and that one is called anchoring fibers in order to anchor the tissue to the connective tissue. The reticular lamina also has a fiber that sort of reaches up to lamina densa which is called fibronectin. So that one is called fibronectin that makes a, a connection between those two layers. The last thing that we need to know is that all of those fibers, which are considered proteins, they are produced from the connective tissue that follows beneath. So is that the role of the connective tissue, those cells of the connective tissue, which is called the fibroblasts, that we'll talk about later, those fibroblasts make the fibers that uh, helps to stabilize and make up this basement membrane for the epithelial tissues in order to rest on. So that was generally the structure of the epithelial tissue. Next time we're going to talk about the types of the epithelial tissue depending on their uh, morphology and their shape. So until the next time, I thank you for watching and see you.